take his place. She will take her place. And if you need to, you sacrifice yourself for this, this young person. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the love and sacrifice will show them how to be a man, how to be a woman. That's what's lacking. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, can we trust the teenagers at the club too? Can we trust you have to at some point. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the thing. I mean, when they're, when they're 14, 15, uh, the answer, of course, is no. But when they're 16 and they... Uh, you, you, you take them for their 40 hours or whatever it is to, uh, you know, uh, to, to be able to prepare for the driver's test. Once they get the license, you're basically saying, okay, you know, not only does the state agree, but <laughs> I have to agree too. And I mean, sometimes it's a big gulp sure. that you take. And, you know, this is the other thing. The, the child goes out and most of them will have an accident, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. But mm-hmm. we have to be prepared for them. We, we're not perfect. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going. But look what you learned from the accident. You know, hopefully it's not a bad accident. Mm-hmm. Most mm-hmm. people would say fender bender or something, mm-hmm. something of that nature. But I can remember growing up when, you know, my father let me take the keys to the car, and I had come back from the beach with a bunch of kids, and I had a fender bender. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I remember the way my father treated me in that. He didn't. Uh, he didn't put me down. He encouraged me. He was there for. I mean, I felt awful. Right. But you know, that's the way, that's the other aspect of acting like a father. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not a tyrant. You're not a right. dictator. Right. Uh, you know, this is where you you need to uh, share compassion and love, but be firm. Because I had to pay for the car. Mm. You know, to get it fixed. Yeah. Which, you know, that was that was fair. Yeah. You really thought that was fair? Yeah, I did. Wow, that's great. Good training, John. Mm-hmm. You know, because I would be hearing right now, that's not fair. Listen, this same story. Mm-hmm. We had bought a, uh, a Volvo. And we wanted a, we wanted a car that was safe enough to take an accident. Because <laughs> the likelihood was that there would be one. <laughs> but maybe... After a few months of ha- having this car, the Lord spoke to me and said, it's time for you to get another car. I went and bought a car, gave my oldest daughter the Volvo. Mm-hmm. On the way back from having purchased the car, I saw the aftermath of her accident. I mean, literally, I had just bought, I'm telling you, God is my witness. It is no joke. In fact, when I left the dealership, the, it just... I know it was the Lord, but it's just in my, in my head. See if she's still over. I know she was going a certain place to help another one of our children get to a job interview. See if she's still over there. So I drove over there, and I was seconds beyond behind her accident. <laughs> but the point of that is this. If you are willing to disciple your young person, your child, your spiritual son, whatever, and you're willing to take them all the way, God will enable you to have everything that you need to have for them to take the steps that they need to take. Nobody in the family suffered because I just bought another car (laughs) right before the accident. (laughs) So God will will make everything okay. Wow. (laughs) Well, I hope the Lord doesn't tell me to buy new (laughs) things. Right. All right. We go from this this sex teenager to the color we are. So, what's the difference between those two? Uh, sex non the This is the mature son. Mm-hmm. You know, this is the, uh, the, the 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 son who can take responsibility, full responsibility, for fathering mm-hmm. other sons. Um, and uh, you know, this is this is the place we want to bring people. Because we, they really are, I mean, we, we're living in a fatherless generation. Mm-hmm. You know, there are basically no fathers anyplace. And, uh, you know, even in the church, mm-hmm. uh, where we would assume that the pastor or the elders would father people, basically, this is non existent. So, uh, you know, we need to raise people to, um, uh, you know, to, to be mature sons so that they would 
you know, I, I like what uh, Ernest said, to give yourself mm. for your for your spiritual attack. Yeah. Yeah. Aren't there anything you want to add to that? But that's exactly it. Once you're Leo's, um, you still have a relationship with a spiritual father. Because yeah. you, you don't come, you never arrive at the place where you don't need that individual. You may not call on them as much, but you need that relationship. And so, but once you're at that place, you, you, you probably are calling on your spiritual father a lot less than the nephew you're in church today, <laughs> obviously. But yes, you have your own uh, work, and you're, you're, you're involved in it, and uh, you probably have your own car, and your own car too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that concludes what, the, what, we, what we call the Pater, you know, or the Father. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are your comments about this level of sonship, the way from the Riyadh to the Pater? No, I mean, this is the Patriarch. You know, this is the father of fathers. And, uh, you know, when we consider somebody like Abraham, who was mm-hmm. a patriarch, mm-hmm. um, the Bible tells us that he had 318 uh, men of his household. Mm-hmm. And they were not servants, they were not indentured, you know, they were mm-hmm. not slaves, they were, they were members of his household. Uh, and, you know, so the Bible tells us this early on, uh, you know, in the book of Genesis, because this is this is the pattern that we are to uh, to build with. But there are patriarchs, there are fathers of God. Well, John, on that note, we ran out of time. So thank you for sharing that there are fathers of fathers. Mm-hmm. Ernest, thank you for sharing your heart. A really enlightening conversation. Hopefully somebody heard today a word in which they needed to know how to continue to grow in your walk with God. I'm Dana Thompson. Thank you for watching the Apostolic Forum. Stay tuned for future broadcasts.